All right, so let's start with the big story that we are tracking on Vion Adesa. In a major breakthrough, Ethiopia's Tigray rebels have now said that they are ready for ceasefire talks with the country's federal government led by Abiy Ahmed and that they'd want to accept an African Union-led peace process. The Tigray reportedly has already set up a negotiation team that is ready to be deployed without any further delay. Now, the announcement was made amidst a flurry of international diplomacy after the fighting fled in the northern part of Ethiopia in the month of August again this year. And this has been the first time in months that a fresh round of attacks resumed in the conflict-ridden region. Now, there's been no immediate comment from the Ethiopian government side, which long for long has insisted that any peace process must be brokered by Addis Ababa. Now, according to reports, the Tigray People's Liberation Front that rules the Tigrayan region has not placed any precondition for talks, although it is said that it expected a credible peace process with mutually acceptable mediators. And this can be seen as a much watered-down approach from the TPLF rebels who have always maintained a pretty strong stance against the government. Now, earlier this month, the TPLF leader, Gebre Michael, had proposed a truce with four conditions, including unfettered humanitarian access and also the restoration of essential services in the war-hit region of Tigray. He reportedly had also called for the withdrawal of the Eritrean forces from across Ethiopia as a part of a condition for truce. Meanwhile, in another development, the American President Joban has renewed sanctions that had been imposed on Ethiopian officials involved in the Tigray conflict, pointing out that the situation in the Horn of Africa continues to pose a threat to American national security interests and its foreign policy. Now, the war that has dragged on for several years now erupted in November 2020 after the Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed ordered for a military offensive against regional forces in the Tigray province. The conflict also extended to neighboring Afar and the Amhara provinces just a few months later. The last November, the Tigrayan forces had marched towards Addis Ababa, but then were driven back by a government offensive that month. A ceasefire was announced in the month of March earlier this year, and after both sides had fought a bloody impasse, and the government declared a humanitarian truce. However, rights groups have said that despite the truce, the Ethiopian federal forces have not let much food and other relief items to reach the war torn region. The fighting has displaced millions of people, it has pushed parts of Tigray into extreme famine like conditions, and has also resulted in thousands of civilians being killed so far. All right, now to get us more updates in terms of what exactly is, of course, expected in this civil war that has been dragging on for almost two years in Ethiopia, we're being joined in by our correspondent, Coletta Wonjo, who is joining us live from Addis Ababa. Now, Coletta, this is an interesting development that has taken place. The TPLF rebels have said that they are interested in signing a truce agreement that will be mediated by the African Union. You know, how, how likely is that that this truce is something that could last. Well, I guess for now the, it, this gives some hope because uh, we know the, the TPLF had given its own conditions and had, hold, uh, had also shown that they do not have trust in the African Union Commission leadership. But now um, it's kind of a, a compromise. We might look at it like, th like that in it uh, trying to also align itself with what the government of Ethiopia had also preferred under a peace, for a peace process. So this kind of sets forth. Uh, the, the negotiations to go through, although we've already seen that they want mutually accepted mediators, mutually accepted uh, international observers, and, but uh, the, the communication from the TPLF or the, the Tigray government is that um, they have, uh, the appetite for peace has grown even more stronger. So what people are hoping that, and what the African Union has also said, is that they need to maintain this appetite, and so we're also waiting for the government to see what it will say, and uh, from then maybe we, we might see them now making uh, modalities in terms of uh, time, place, and also agreeing on some of these issues. Right now, at this point of time, this, this is a war that has dragged on for almost about two years. It has also resulted in a huge humanitarian crisis. You know, tell us about how people within the Tigrayan province have been impacted because of the war.
Well, if you look at the whole uh, northern region, which which is the three provinces, that's the Tigray, Amhara, and, and Afar, uh, there are more than 9 million people, according to the United Nations, that have been affected and have been forced to need uh, emergency assistance or humanitarian assistance because of this conflict. Within the Tigray region alone, the United Nations says that uh, over 5 million people need help. Now, th there was a kind of a gap in terms of supply of humanitarian uh, assistance into the region between December, 20, December uh, last year and March, uh, March this year until when there was a unilateral ceasefire that was that was declared so that kind of created a big gap then now with the fresh fighting that began uh, some week, weeks back then we also have issues of humanitarian agencies accessing this region from about 24th of uh, of september you know so uh, it's about millions of people who need help who need to go back to their normal lives absolutely indeed thank you very much indeed Coletta wonjo for joining us from addis ababa and getting us all those updates there beyond is now available in your country download the app now and get all the news on the move